Well, sir, the evening meal has been over only a little while as we enter the small house halfway up on the next block now. And here in the living room, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook. Vic is seated at the library table playing solitaire. And Sade is at the telephone talking uh, animatedly. Listen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, forget it, Miss Skimple. I told Harold I'd give him candy and I have to make good on my promise. Didn't go to any expense at all. One of the kitchenware traveling men down at the plant won two buckets of hard candies as a prize somewhere and give them to Mr. Gook to give to Rush. Well, Lance, Rush can't eat two big buckets of candy, so I immediately thought a little Harold. I promised him several times he was going to get something nice from me. <laughs> uh, so you tell him it's on the way. Oh, not at all, Miss Gimple. Only too glad. You bet. Surely. All right, Miss Gimple. Goodbye. She's nice. Have I ever met you? Sure. Where? Oh, you met her several times. Mm. Are you about ready to leave, Willie? Uh-huh. We got a boy that's going to call on a young lady this evening. That's what I understand. Hello, Romeo. Hi. Your necktie's all squeegeed around crooked. Oh. Mm. Let's just shake a leg tonight, Dr. Sleech. I abound with vitality and gay spirits. Think Fred and Ruthie'd warm up to a game of 500? Fred's working overtime at the foundry. Oh, is he? Mm-hmm. I'll stroll down to the bye, Joe. Oh, that fat-headed Gloria Golden's on, ain't she? Pitcher's supposed to be very good. Sad sort of a business, I guess. Miss Harris told me this morning her rumor Mr. Sludge come home last night crying. He was so affected by it. Well, that slab will cry at the drop of the hat. <laughs> Funny, ain't it? The fellas we know that cry a lot. I cry myself sometimes. I cried this morning. Had a knot in my shoestring. It wouldn't come loose and it wouldn't come loose. I was so vexed and upset I burst into tears. You giant old shoestring, you. I sobbed. You joke, but Mr. Sludge does that kind of stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. Rush, aren't you going? Thought I'd sit here and rest a minute. <laughs> You're tired. No, but I sure ain't in any hurry to get over on West Jefferson Street. That's a gallant speech for a true lover to make. Mm. Your sweetheart would no doubt clutch at your heart and swoon if she heard your callous speech. I made a horrible mistake letting myself in for this junk. What junk? Oh, going over to see Annabelle Hemstreet. Why? My friends all know about it and they're going to make my life miserable. Why? They claim I got a girl. Oh, my. Everybody will jash me and make fun of me till I can't stand up. Oh, fiddle. In my circle of acquaintances, we don't have girls. Smelly Clark's got a girl, hasn't he? Well, Smelly's the exception. By George, you don't see Bluetooth Johnson with a girl. Well, I doubt if any girl would have Bluetooth. He generally needs a handkerchief, and he's so smart, Alecky, and show off if a person wants to take him across their knees. Telephone is ringing. Maybe Fred don't have to put in overtime after all. See who it is, will you, son? Mm -hmm. Like me, supper may be cooking up an indoor horseshoe tournament. No, sir, you're going to spend the evening with me. Hello? Yes. Oh, hello, Leland. Huh? Look, fella, if that's what you call up about... Okay, wise guy. Okay. And now I suggest we hang up. I'm very busy right now and can't be bothered with every dimwit that wants... Huh? Oh, they are, huh? Well, for my money, they can sit there till Christmas. Sorry, chum, but I'm hanging up now. Goodbye. Darn the dog on luck. What was all that? Everybody's climbing on me hot and heavy. About having a girl? Yeah. That was Leland Richards. Says all the guys are sitting up at the corner on the curb and waiting to see me head for my sweetheart's house. All set to hand me the raspberry, see? Oh, they're not so cute. I'd get myself a new set of friends if I was you. Oh, you can't blame the guys. It's human nature to point the finger of scorn at an individual that goes calling on girls. It's new human nature to me. Are you leaving, Astrid? Just go into the window and see who's at the corner. Mm. Yeah, they're all there, sitting on the curb in a row. Waiting for you to come out, huh? Yeah. I'll have to walk past them and they'll hoot and holler and choke and scream till who hung the cat. Fine bunch of pals. Yeah. Whole crowd's on deck. Piney Call, Rooster Davis, Leroy Snow, Milton Welch, Willis Roback, and even nicer Scott. Well, I just wouldn't shimmer around oh, with Oh, you kids. can't blame them. Human nature is human nature the world over. You got a pencil, Sadie? I want to write that on my cuff. It's a sweet sentiment to whisper over to yourself before you go to sleep at night. The thing that makes me tough, I'm innocent. I got no doggone girl. Annabelle Hempstreet could go jump in the Pacific Ocean and I wouldn't flick her an eyelash. 
Why did you request the ecstasy of her society this evening, then? I didn't. She requested the ecstasy of my society. Oh, really? Come up to me this morning between second and third hour classes when I was having a drink at the water fountain. Rush, she says, Miss Monroe's having an algebra quiz tomorrow. I know what I says. I can't get them equations straight to save my life, she says. And you got them down cold. Will you come over to my house after supper and help me? <laughs> well, what the heck. I don't mind doing a party a favor. Okay, Annabelle, I says. Fine, she says. I'll expect you around a quarter to seven. It's almost said now. I don't care if it's a quarter to nine. Well, how did the boys find out about you and your engagement? The son of a gun told them. Who? Annabelle. She told Leland Richards about it, and Leland jumped nine feet in the air and spread the news like wildfire. My life's been miserable all day long. Well, look, Sonny, you better run along. You'll be late as it is. Uh-huh. Well, okay, here I go. To run the gauntlet of cat calls and derisive laughter. May your head be bloody but unbowed. <laughs> I'll say. Well, people, I'll see oh, you Oh, wait, on. Willie, you got to run the little errand. And I better scoot along? Well, it's right on your way. Miss Skimple's there on West Monroe. Hmm. I promised little Harold I'd give him candy and one of them buckets Gub brought home this afternoon. Hey. What's the matter? You don't mean you want me to carry one of them buckets up the street? You won't be going a single step out of your road. You no. Won't... No what? They'll think I'm taking it to Annabelle. Who'll think you're taking what? The guys. The guys up at the corner. If I come out of this house and walk up past Kelsey Street carrying a bucket of candy, they'll think it's for Annabelle. Oh, fiddle them guys. My life won't be worth living. You heard like Mom, all day long I've been trying to convince them I'm calling on Annabelle Hemstreet tonight because she asked me to study algebra with her. Some of them are more than half convinced. But if I walk toward her house with a big bucket of candy, they'll figure I've been lying. Well, they can figure whatever they want to figure. You kids are welcome to enjoy your crazy didos as long as they don't interfere with important stuff. And this is important stuff. I told Miss Skimple you'd be over in the next half hour with a bucket of candy. Little Harold's waiting for it. And you're going right past their house, so there's nothing Mom, in the I world. Mom, I can't. Oh, yes, you can. I can't. I can't walk past that crowd of fellas carrying a bucket of candy. My life... Tell the food you should get. Tell the food you should get. You better scoot, mister. I tell you, my life won't be worth living. I'll have Let's to go have in. Let's have it quiet, please. Hello? Oh, yes. How are you, Miss Trogo? Oh, fine as silk. It's sitting here with our teeth in our mouth is all. Why, I think we'd love to. Just a second. Trogos are asking us over to play cards. Fine. Mom, I... Hi can't. there. Victor says wonderful. Sure. How soon? Why, right away. Sure, we'll hop right along. We'll be there before you can say Jack Robinson. All right, Miss Trogo. Put on your hat. Immediately, Dr. Sleech. Come on, Rush. Grab that bucket of candy and we'll scoot. We're not going together. Well, sure. What's the matter? Miss Trogel lives in the West Side. We're Island. going together? What's eating you, Rush? I can't. Can't what? Walk out of this house and go up the street and pass my crowd of friends in the society of my parents. Why? They'll think my parents are going with me to Annabelle Hemstreet's house. Come on. They'll think I'm taking a bucket of candy to Annabelle Hemstreet, and they'll think my father and mother are going with me. Take this boy by the arm, Vic. <laughs> Let's go, Uncle Pete. My life. My life. Oh, what's the matter with your life? It won't be worth living. It won't be worth living. Come on, fellas. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up on the next block.